so Reform so, UK, they got what, 10% of, of the poll? Uh, again, but, according to ONS, people who are less educated are actually following them. That's what's going on. <laughs>
coldest or warmest it's ever been. This is nonsense. And if you, um, if you look at what we're in, the Atlantic uh, multidecadal oscillation, which is that graph, it's number two, I'm Paul two. When, when, when there were no slides, I'm sick of the slides. Oh, OK, yeah, fine. Not but basically, look, just look at the North Atlantic, yes? Mm. That's what we've been in for 30 years. We're just coming out of it. And the temperature this last year, according to the satellite records, was the hottest year since 79. Fact. But it's all in the seas. That's why you didn't feel it. It wasn't the hottest in Asia. It wasn't the hottest in Europe. It wasn't the hottest it in was. North America. It was the hottest in the seas. And the seas, the seas warm the atmosphere. The atmosphere does not warm the seas. Right, so, so that's, uh, there you go. Yeah, I don't, uh, it's, it's, but, but, it's but bogus. Let's, Let's go with the records. But if we no, 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 but if you said that basically it's the, the highest in 38 years, I think. No, so it's, the, it's, the, it's the highest. It's Simple as that. It's not recorded wrongly. But, uh, you know, let's not go down a rabbit hole. We don't need to. Well, let's, well, let's, let's OK, so that's what he said. That's what more. you're saying. Can... So there we are. Um, I'm actually using the official record, which I'm going to show you now, um, from the Met Office in Spain. It wasn't 30, by the way. That's an exaggeration. And it wasn't a record, by the way. That's an exaggeration. So when anything comes up, I just look up the official records. Uh, and what I stated there was totally correct. But notice Jim's way of trying to be, tend to be clever with the Sahara dust, with her dress, her summer dress colours and so on. All totally irrelevant time-wasting stuff. He does it all the time. The purpose is to show how great he is at forecasting things, when actually all he is is a weather observer. I'll be going into that because I'll be taking him apart for what he says later in this. So far, it's just standard Jim Dale rubbish where facts don't matter. Let's not go down this rabbit hole. Yeah, fine. OK, I don't like going down rabbit holes. But, you know, I, I am using the Met Office uh, uh, from Spain and you are not. Here's a Met Office report. Temperatures in southern Spain today reached just over 28C. By the way, that's not 30. The second highest value recorded, second highest in January since 1985. So, you know, some 30 odd years ago, it was warmer. I could go on, you can freeze frame and read the rest if you like, but he goes against evidence all the time. It doesn't matter. He's pure alarmism without any foundation whatsoever. Now, before we go into this session, Jim scoured the newspapers in the green room and picked up a newspaper to take him with him. And he seemed to be determined to refer any question back to this newspaper thing he's got in front of him. I don't know from where. But um, what you're going to see now is Jim prevaricating about which party because he doesn't want to offend the Greens because they're on his side. He doesn't want to offend, you know, a number of people, uh, you know, so he just goes all around beating around the bushes instead of trying to answer the question. The question, don't forget, is which party's got the best climate policy, as it were. Uh, and so it's not to do with tactical voting, which he goes into, etc. But here we go. And Jim's got his new pa newspaper report in front of him. He's determined to get across, no matter what the subject. Whoever's phone can somebody switch that phone off. Right. right, so now, now let's talk about the political parties. Yeah. In your view, which one do you think is best to deal with? Well, there's a lot of them. The first thing to say is... Well, just choose one. Um, oh, OK, the ONS report, the, the, the latest government ONS report, uh, shows that 75% of the population in the UK are very or somewhat concerned by climate change. 9% on the op opposite side. There's a few that haven't made their mind up. But that's the difference. So 75%. This is the that is why this is the it is a big, big issue. Oh. That report doesn't say which side of the fence they're on. I mean, given all the propaganda by government in every single part of our society, from Ofcom, who govern uh, broadcast, from Ofgem, who govern the electricity grid, from the school education system, from everybody, who wouldn't be concerned. But it doesn't say which side of the fence they're on. He makes, makes assumptions there. You know, he seems to have difficulty understanding statistics, reports and facts. But nevertheless, let's carry on. And it should but, but, but be. you haven't answered the question. OK, so who's got the best? Well, look, there's a lot of them. Um, I, I, if, I'm, yeah, look, the purists, the idealists, are obviously going to be one? the Green Party. I'm not advocating voting Green Party simply because they tend to... They're not going to win the election. They're doing a lot of the right things. So let, but they are, they are denial... They are, sorry, they are idealists. And, and you can't... We don't live in an ideal world, so we're not going to get there with the Green so, Party. So, in the real world, which political party do you think is best place? I, I think the best place one is going to be Labour. They're, they're well ahead in the election, in the uh, in the polls. They've got the uh, clean energy uh, superpower uh, wish to to make us that. Uh, they've got the great British energy 
um, concern, in other words, making us such, such that we can have our own energy without relying on other, other oil and other countries to import. Uh, OK, uh, uh, Paul That's Burgess. what I think. Paul I'm going to answer straight away. I mean, not the Conservatives, not Labour. And by the way, no matter what policy any party takes on climate, it makes no difference at all. We've already discussed with you how the CO2 is growing anyway and all the COP meetings make no difference. So if people who want to change climate in their world, but they're wrong about on CO2, they should be protesting outside the Chinese and Indian embassies, right. not here. But if you want a straight answer, it's the party that will stop all this net zero. If you do away with oil, by the way, which is Labour saying they'll stop the oil licensing, Jim, Jim wouldn't have his clothes on, he wouldn't be sitting on a seat, we, God, wouldn't, have a, a like no, is, God, we wouldn't have a desk yeah. like this, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have the well, camera. It might look better here than there. Because oil is involved way. in all of that. It's involved yeah. in every single aspect. You wouldn't even have penicillin because we use an oil derivative to make penicillin. But you're speaking, Paul, every you're speaking single in thing the past. we do. Pardon? You're speaking in the past. That's well, all the, done and dusted. We have to look forward, not oh, backwards. What's the replacement for all the... Yeah, listen to problems. me. I think you're internet reform there, Reform UK, yeah? So there we are. He has this newspaper report he wants to get a hit on and he's determined to swing it round to Reform UK. Well, all I'm saying is you vote for parties that support getting rid of net zero. That's what I'm saying. And only vote for parties that get rid of it. But he has to get this hit in on reform. So he swings the general point I'm making about doing away with net zero to one party. And there's more than one party wanting to get rid of net zero. If no, you're, no if you're I'm not talking about any UK, party. Any party that drops the net is zero. Is it Reform nonsense. UK? Because that's the only one that any I can see on this list. That drops the net No, UK polls. OK, so it. Reform so, UK. They got what, 10% of, of the poll? Uh, again, but according to ONS, people who are less educated are actually following them. That's what's going on. What do you there mean more by that? Of, no, no, don't exactly insult that. people. I, I, Look, I'm well, not. This time well, we'll come back ONS. On don't insult That's people. not my figures. Sorry? That's not my figures. And the it's ONS not figures you. say they're not intelligent who follow reform That's, in the UK. The ONS say those that are against climate change who follow reform, generally speaking, are in the, the, the less educated portion of the population. Well, so there we are. The people who vote for reform and the people who are on my side of the argument on climate change are basically less qualified people and they're relatively uneducated. Coming from a man who is, well, let's examine his education, as I will be doing in his background now, because I'm incensed by this. You know, I really am. I do not believe for one second that the Office of National Statistics, who he's referring to, have examined the qualifications of the people voting for the Reform Party. I, I just can't believe that. So what I did as I went to the ONS story about the 75%, because don't forget, the ONS are also woken on the side of climate change, but they don't say that. Oh, well, I can't find it. So I'm going to give the reference to, to that paper, and maybe someone else can search and find this information where people who vote on my, or people who vote for reform are less educated than the people who don't, obviously. <sighs> This is coming from a man whose education I'm about to examine uh, 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 and declare to everybody as far as I can find it. And I welcome any counter-arguments on this, and I'll happily publish a video from Jim on this to explain it. I know he's been doing this meteorological stuff for about 40 years, but is he qualified even to do it? You know, now... He's talking to a bloke, and I'm, I don't bang my own trumpet, but, you know, I've got two scientific degrees, university degrees. I've got... Um, I became chartered, so I, I belong to different chartered bodies, including environmental bodies, where, where I was chartered. And chartered means, you know, to become a chartered engineer, for example. When I became one, you had to be a minimum age of 25. So you, you, you have had to spend seven years, just like a doctor, and you have to have, be a member of, of an official... Uh, organization where you're chartered and that is just the beginning of your career in a sense so uh, uh, it is ridiculous that Jim is making these statements from his position and so I, well let's I'll show you my answers first to him on, on television and then we're going to go into examine just who Jim Dale is that's government figures, not my figures. Oh, well, let's let's come back to that, Paul. Can I just say, normally you insult me personally, but this time you've insulted you know, a lot of people, about 12% of the voters, apparently. So actually more than that with you, Kip, and the others. So, look, don't get into that. What matters are facts. No matter what we do, we don't control the climate as humans. One. Number two... Number oh, two, we do, though. If you think, oh, we do. Oh, that's nonsense. Oh, well, that's great news. We humans control our climate. All we've got to do is dial the knob of CO2 and we do away with ice ages. 
you know, we do away with all that. We, we control everything. What world is he living in? So he can, he can control, he thinks humans control the climate. How silly is that? How truly stupid is that statement? Um, we don't control the climate. Never have done and never will do. We can affect the climate. Yes, farming affects the climate since people started stopped hunter-gathering and started a farm. But those are very small things and we certainly don't control it. Uh, I'm just incensed by the stupidity of that statement. And this is where he's coming from. He lives in a world where, you know, you can pick up a newspaper and come into a television interview like this. You can insult um, hundreds of thousands, if not mil actually millions of people. You, 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 you try to smear people rather than deal with the, with the facts. You, you, uh, you, I've got a whole liturgy of uh, episodes I think I'll put together where, you know, he says, oh, that man is, is um, who no one's heard of him when he's quite famous. No one's heard of him and he's a liar when he hasn't even met him. He doesn't know about him, calls him a liar. He doesn't need even evidence to proceed. This man is so shallow, it's beyond belief, actually. And he's just gone past the point in this interview. Uh, and um, I hope Richard Tice um, gets involved in this, actually. I really do. Because, you know, what a way to insult his followers, uh, the followers of reform. I um, All my political view is on this that I'll go public on is, is that only vote for parties that you know are going to drop the net zero. Now, you can make up your mind which party there. That is my only advice. I am not trying to be individual party political. I'll back reform on this. I'll back UKIP on this. I'll back anybody who's wanting to drop the net zero madness. And by the way, net zero is going to drop because the pain of it, which is only just beginning to bite, but unfortunately, we have locked into years to come with pain because of stupid contracts signed by the government. The pain of it will make it collapse. I've got no doubt about that. It's untenable unless you want to go back to the old-fashioned serfdom because that's what the game is. Anyway, let's continue. But if you think we do, uh, if you think we do, then you'll be protesting outside the Chinese and other embassies because we That's have no control. That's happening worldwide if anyway. We are you denying that fossil fuels have not exaggerated the CO2 and they haven't. into the, the atmosphere? The CO2 was saturated yeah, well, that's where it by 18. That's where it starts and stops, no. Paul. All right, then. No, you can debate the, le the latest Nobel, Nobel Prize winner for physics then. And all the physics. I've just done a video on this, by the way. You know, I, I on, bet on you the have. Yeah, I What's bet the you difference? Have. Look, on, you, no, no. You're following no, the conspiracy theory. Side of They're things. not conspiracy. That is the old point. So Nobel Prize it's... winners in physics are conspiracists, are they? Uh, that one that you just mentioned, and the other one, oh, so. yeah, and, and the previous you, one, you, your They're graphs, conspiracy. your maps, everything. You've and got the to look at, you look at the bigger the world picture. On CO2 are conspiracists. Look at, look at what's what? going on. Discuss the evidence, not people. Don't discuss people. Discuss the evidence, and the evidence is: if you want to make a difference, the evidence is out if there. If you Paul. were right, if you were right, then what you're doing makes no difference at what, all, and you'd be we, outside the Chinese Indian what, Why don't we look forward instead of backwards? Let's just think about what's going to go on here. In reality. I there are am. only going to be two winners of, of the election, either Tories or Labour. That is to do with tactical voting, not the question, which is which party has the best climate policy. And by the way, unless we at last vote for what we believe in, and not just tactically, we'll never get change. What we're asked, but being asked to do at the moment is, is choose between a really bad Conservative Party on this and an even worse Labour Party on this, with Ed Miliband in charge of, of our energy policy, which would be the end. <laughs> the end of life almost as we know it, I will tell you. The cost of that is going to be incredible. It's also worth pointing out that the party that has a policy, and there's a few parties have it, of dropping net zero, but let's take reform. Today, reform are on 13% in the polls. Conservatives are on 20 And there are things that can happen this year that can put reform ahead of the Conservatives. So, you know, don't, just don't accept the, which, which is the worst one. Except, you know, try to change. OK, so it isn't going to be reform. They, they probably won't even get one seat, not even Mr Tice, OK? So that's the reality of the situation. So who's got the best policy between the two? Well, the Tories are sitting on a fence. They say one thing one side and they do another on the other side. Correct. So they're going nowhere fast. So we, at least we agree really? there. So that's, that leaves us with one and one only. Now, I'm not no. saying that's no. going to be perfect. No, want to stop oil. I'm hoping 
to have a word with Rachel Reeves in the next couple of weeks when I get to see oh, her. Great for you. And see but, whether or not we can uh, we can move in this direction that is much needed. Much okay? needed. Much you needed. can't yeah. survive in a modern economy without oil. You everything that's nobody's around us, the camera oh, looking at us, your phone, your seat you're sitting oh, on, oh, the zips oh, on your nobody's, trousers all depend on oil. Nobody's taking that away from you tomorrow. It is an evolution, not a revolution. Well, give me the alternative. Get used to it. All right, then where's okay. the evolution to what? This is the, this so is the direction the of travel. To all those things. All right, even, look, even Mr. Tyson drives an electric car. So do I. Right? And he loves because it. I'm and he not tells everybody else not cars. to have one. I'm anti-imposing them on oh, anyone. Oh, my God. Right? Yeah, and I think he makes a good point there. I think a lot of people are anti these things being imposed. We there's there's no imposition. It's well, there is. It's an evolution. No, 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 hold on, Jim. Mm -mm. No, I've given you plenty of time. There is. Because in 2030 or 2035, wherever they get to, they are trying to extinguish the sort okay, of petrol that's and five or six engine. years' time. Yeah, but you, I'm, being, I'm being forced now, imposed, the electric car is being imposed on me. Well, that's you shouldn't have point. a problem, Mr. Tyson. Oh, no, no, you, no, no, hang on. That's the point you made. You said no one's imposing anything on you. I'm proving to you that they are. I think you'll find when the, the, the election is done and dusted and finished and if there is a Labour government, I think you'll, you'll still see that it's not an imposition, it will be an evolution and it will has to go with... It would this be, is the old point about the Green Party. You be can't, they don't take the economic It would be wheels. an evolution if they continued with petrol and diesel and you had a choice. The, it, there is, it is being imposed because they are taking away the opportunity for you to buy petrol and diesel engines. We are where we are at this moment in time when the, w where, when we get to the point of the election and, and those manifestos are put out i think we can the probably come back and see where we actually last stand. 10 seconds to you paul Burgess. the top manufacturers don't have a choice on this they've got a plan ahead basically you are ruining the quality of life of the entire population and we've got to wake up and you, you look i don't back i'm not a member of any party i just i choose not to be because i want to forward my climate Thing, and I don't want to get party involved. Well, but I, I advise, don't vote for any party that will not agree to drop the whole net zero nonsense. Well, there you go. That's their thoughts, uh, Jim Dale and Paul Burgess. On climate, what do you think, though? Which party do you think is best placed to deal with the climate situation? So, first of all, taking from his website about his background and experience and qualifications, um, let's look at what it says. Founder and senior meteorological consultant, Jim was born in Manchester in England, December 1960. Jim turned a boyhood hobby into a career and after qualifying as a meteorological observer at the Royal Navy School of Meteorology and Oceanography. So he's an observer, meteorological observer, not a meteorologist. So let's now look into that. Looking at the definition of observer, a meteorological observer, it's a technician who takes weather observations. A meteorological observer or weather observer is a person authorised by a weather authority to make or record meteorological observations. They are technicians who are responsible for the accurate observation, rapid measurement and timely collection and recording and timely submission of meteorological parameters and information and various atmospheric phenomena in the meteorological centre. So that is what an observer is. It is not a qualified meteorologist. The average salary for a meteorological observer in the UK is £32,137 per annum. This compares with the average salary of £33,402, as you can see there. And congratulations to Jim. He's done very well. He's founded a business and makes quite a lot of money. And, you know, my hat off to him for that. I've got no wish to harm him. But I don't think he should go around accusing people who are less qualified uh, and using that as a sort of argument, especially when it's not even true. And this has pretty well forced me to show Jim for what he is. Uh, and, and this is why, when I present technical data to him, he can't absorb it. He's got no scientific training at all. When we walked out into the green room after the meeting, after the t broadcast on Saturday, um, the security guard asked me a question. Are oh, you a scientist? Yes. What do you do? I, I, I said I do hy hydroclimatology. It was one of my areas. And I explained that to him. He then said to Jim, are you a scientist? And he said, yes. He has no scientific qualifications or experience, for that matter, at all. In the UK, the Royal Meteorological Society is the body that qualifies meteorologists. And look what it states here. The Royal Meteorological Society is the only body able to award registered or chartered status to meteorologists. And when you're chartered, you're known as a CMET, just as I was known as a C engineer, chartered engineer. So that is the professional qualification. And it seems that Jim Dale 
is not a qualified meteorologist. He's a qualified observer. And there's a huge difference. And the funny part is, looking at their qualifications, I would stand more of a chance now of going and getting a CMET than maybe Jim Dale would. I don't know. He may get in with his experience. I have no idea. But what he is not is a qualified meteorologist, according to UK legislation. This is what the Royal Society states for qualifications. You'll need a degree in any science, engineering or computational subject. An alternative qualification may be acceptable for someone with considerable relevant practical experience. So I would stand a very good chance because I've been a chartered member for environmental engineers and civil engineers and water engineers and so on. And I've actually built mathematical models of the climate. Even the Met Office, as you can see here, understands the width of what is climate science. So it accepts trainees in, say, with degrees in physics, mathematics and environmental studies, geography and probably geology and so on. It's a very wide subject. And just like you can be a climate scientist and be a geologist or a geographer, or you could be a mathematician, that's just an umbrella, just like um, a doctor. You can be a doctor who's a gynecologist, a doctor who's a heart surgeon, your GP's a doctor. There's an umbrella description. This is what Jim keeps attacking me on. It's because he has no understanding of the subject that he even claims, in the case of climate, to be a consultant on. Or at least I'm in good company. Because here, again in this programme, he called the latest um, winner of the Physics Nobel Prize, a, that's John Clauser, he called him a conspiracy theorist. So let's examine just what he has said that's a conspiracy theory. So I'm going to introduce you to John Clauser and give you the work that Jim claims is a conspiracy theory. Because funnily enough, it's basic meteorology. Basic Meteorology. Oh, point. So Nobel Prize it's... winners in physics are conspiracists, are they? Uh, that one that you just mentioned? And the other one. Oh, so. they are. And, and the previous and you, one. You, your They're graphs, conspiracy. your maps, everything. You've and got the to leading look at, you look at the big world on CO2 are conspiracists. Look at, look at what? what's going on. Here is John Clauser. Um, funnily enough, um, retired as well, out of the clutches of the system that just <laughs> basically cancels anyone who goes against the agenda. Here he is, born 1942, and was awarded the Nobel Prize for Physics for his experiments with quantum entanglement. Um, he, what he did is he found the elephant in the room in quantum entanglement and progressed the whole subject quite a lot. Invisible light, i.e. real sunlight, which is sunlight is the stuff that heats the Earth. Uh, the... Infrared re-radiation is the stuff that, that cools the Earth. And it's the balance between these two that controls uh, the Earth's temperature. And the important piece of the puzzle that has been left out is trying to do this all with a cloud-free Earth when the real Earth is shrouded in clouds. I have some pictures, I don't know if you can uh, show them, of satellite pictures of the Earth. These are all freely available on NASA's website. And they show cloud cover variations anywhere from 5 to 95 percent. Typically, the Earth is shrouded in clouds uh, at least between a third of its uh, area to two-thirds of its area. And this, and this, it fluctuates. The cloud cover fraction fluctuates uh, quite dramatically on daily, weekly time scales. We call this weather. <laughs> it, 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 you can't have weather without having clouds. And it is this fluctuation in cloud cover of the Earth that causes what I would refer to as sunlight reflectivity thermostat that controls the climate, controls the temperature of the Earth, and stabilizes it uh, very uh, powerfully and very dramatically. Uh, of this mechanism, totally uh, heretofore unnoticed, uh, and I call it kind of a, an elephant in the room hiding in plain sight that nobody seems to have noticed. Uh, I can't imagine why, why not, but there were similar elephants in the room in quantum mechanics that I discovered. 
So the variation in the cloud cover, uh, the, the importance in the actual power balance is 200 times more powerful than the uh, effect, uh, the small effect by comparison of CO2. And I might add also of methane. They're all, methane and CO2 are comparable in the, uh, in the total heat loss. So I, let me give you an example of, uh, of how, how this mechanism works. Okay, first off, you have to notice that the Earth is two-thirds ocean. And that's where most of the, cloud, the importance of the clouds comes in. Sunlight is the heating mechanism. Clouds appear bright white. Brown oceans, etc., are very dark and reflect very little light. But clouds reflect 90% of the sunlight that hits them gets reflected back out into space where it no longer comes to the Earth, no longer heats the Earth. Say you only got a, a third of a cloud cover. So you now have lots and lots of sunlight. Sunlight impinging on the ocean evaporates seawater. Seawater forms water vapor. The water vapor floats up to the up into the sky and forms clouds. It forms lots and lots of clouds because the cloud uh, creation rate is very high. But we started out with too low a set of clouds and now we have an increasing number. So now we end up with very high cloud coverage. Okay, so now to say it's two thirds. Well, let me give you an example. If you want to Try to read a book in a, on an overcast day, indoors, <laughs> without turning the lights on. It's just too dark. You can't do it without turning the lights on. The question is, where did all that sunlight go? It's coming in scattered light, coming in through the window, but boy, it's a lot darker now. So uh, where did it go? There's only one place. It got scattered back out into space where it's no longer uh, heating the earth. So, okay, so we now have the total of power input coming to the earth is now much, much smaller. Okay, well, this is happening on the oceans too. If you have large cloud cover, you have a lot of shadows. Clouds create shadows. You can see this by standing on a, a watching clouds pass over. Well, the oceans are now shadowed. The shadows don't have enough energy to evaporate anywhere near as much water. So if we have too much cloud cover, then the, oh, we reduce the evaporation rate of water. And so that then re reduces the production of cloud. So we now have these two competing clouds. Okay, so the, the power loss is like 104 watts per square meter when we only have a third cloud cover and 208 watts per square meter of surface area of the Earth when we have a very low cloud cover. So the difference between those is the order of 104 watts per square meter of surface area. That needs to be compared with this minuscule half a watt per square meter of surface area that CO2 contributes. So the power in this thermostat in terms of what they refer to as radiative forcing. So these are the how many watts per square meter of surface area uh, are, are involved. It is 200 times more powerful than the effect of CO2 and also methane, by the way. There we are. Um, a Nobel's Prize winner has just explained the very simple process of how clouds are formed. Water evaporates basically from the oceans. It comes up, forms clouds, the clouds actually have an effect that's 200 times more powerful in cooling than, than, the, <laughs> than the CO2 or methane. So it's a basic meteorological um, thing. It's the thermostat for the Earth. That's what controls the Earth's temperature. And it, it's as simple as that, really. Now, you can go into more complicated details on it. You can go into little debates on it. But that's all he pointed out. For that, he's called a conspiracy theorist by a, a person who's trained to read thermometers and uh, humidifiers and, you know, dew point readers and so on. Very good. That's how ridiculous this is. And I just don't see how this can go on with Jim Dale because 
you know, it, I, I give him a graph, which he's never seen before. In fact, before he looks at it, he states, oh, no, that's no good. That's cherry picking. I give him IPCC data, the very people he lives, lives off, if you like. And he's, no, 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 that can't be true. He doesn't examine it even. There's no scientific element to this at all. And so how can we carry on on this level of debate? Well, it's not a debate. It's just laughable. Now, I hate to have done what I've just done in this video because I really have held back, even though I have been asked, as I said before, many times to deal with this. Now, if he wants to come back on this, I'm happy to publish any video he wants unedited. Uh, give it to me, I'll put it on my site. You know, I'm not actually after him. I actually think he's done a very good job with hardly any qualifications at all to have built up a business like this. And I congratulations on that. He, he's great, you know, that's good. I'm not denying his experience of 40 years of doing this. But what he can't be saying is that other people have low qualifications. And I accepted it when it was directed to me. But I will not accept it when it's directed to millions of you people out there, you know, the public. I will not accept that because it's so hypocritical and so lacking in understanding of the most basic elements of fairness. And that's why I made this video. So, yeah, I've had to break a principle in doing it. Um, but... You know, it really, I'll just finish on my principle. It doesn't matter that he's an observer. All that matters is the arguments he brings forward. But he doesn't bring any forward. He he just relies on this on this sort of monolith of, 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 of denial, as it were. He doesn't actually debate me. He actually just appeals to authority all the time without any reference. So he throw temperatures are are adjusted but meticulously he has no understanding of how temperatures are adjusted he has no understanding of homogenization or the process or the quality control he has no understanding whatsoever uh, of the effect of the urban heat island effect which is enormous and and it's these things that just make it extremely difficult for me it'd be much easier if I had an opponent who was much more knowledgeable it really would as regards climate, he knows nothing. He really, in fact, what he knows is dangerous. It's like a negative knowledge. And with that, I will finish this video. See you next time. Bye.